Hey Maya, how are you? In our workshop at home, um, I know you wanted me to talk about Corvettes and why people love them so much. Um, they came out in 1953, and you know I've been playing with these cars since I'm 15 years old, and always loved uh, just the look of them and the performance of the car itself. Um, it's been you know rated as a top car of the year for probably the last 20 or 30 years. Um, it's won the North America Car of the Year Award multiple times. I don't even know how many times it's been. Um, and it's one of the most coveted cars probably in the last uh, 64 years since 1953. Uh, I mean, just to give you a history, these cars came out in 1953. Nobody knew what they were. Uh, all the uh, servicemen came back from World War II and they saw all these European sports cars over in Europe and uh, we just didn't have that kind of car here in the US and basically what Chevy did was they took a uh, a sedan chassis and put a fiberglass body uh, with a six cylinder blue flame engine and uh, that's how they designed the first 53 Corvette um, it's a funny thing that when they put the Motorama uh, part together and they started uh, showing the car. They, it actually came out in the Waldorf Astoria in 1952. When the car was produced, um, they wanted some publicity, so, so they gave the car um, to actually John Wayne to drive around, but um, there was an issue with John Wayne. He was just too big for the car, <laughs> but he did love the uh, styling of it. Um, so why do people love these cars so much? Why do I love them so much? Uh, it's just a there's such a following because it's really the only um, American sports car still in existence. It's the longest model running car, running model. Uh, it's been around for 64 years, so there's no other car that can say that. And, uh, you know, the car has really become one of the most uh, uh, best sports cars in the world, uh, competing in Le Mans every year and, and winning their class. Uh, now with the C7R and, and, and just the, uh, the performance of these cars are just amazing. Uh, the reason there are so many around is because the car, the body is fiberglass and it's been fiberglass since 53. Um, so they don't rust. Uh, basically the only thing you have to worry about is the frames on these cars. Um, other than that, uh, they, they, they do last and that's why you see so many of them. Um, it's just, uh, the hobby itself has taken off worldwide now. Uh, people realize in Europe that these cars are just such a bargain at these prices because uh, for the Europeans to buy old Ferraris, uh, the prices are just astronomical right now. They're, um, I mean, they're from they're selling from anywhere from 100 million, excuse me, 100,000 to uh, you know 25 million dollars. Some of these old Ferraris. So to buy an old Corvette for fifty thousand or hundred thousand dollars is is a super deal. Uh, a lot of people call it the American uh, American Ferrari, um, and uh, that's that's one of the reasons why this uh, this hobby is just keep going and getting stronger every year. Um, I personally love the cars. Just getting in the cars and cruising. It's a two seater, um, so when you have the kids, you, they can't fit in the back seat. <laughs> so you put your radio on and you go. Um, again, the performance of them, they, they outhandle most of the cars on the street and uh, they're just one of the most powerful cars uh, to drive. Um, why did I get involved in this car? Uh, you know, it was, it was my brother back in, you know, the 70s coming, coming home with a 63 convertible uh, that I fell in love with. Um, wasn't the greatest car at the time, but we, we restored it. That was the first time we pulled an engine with my dad in, in the garage and, uh, and made a mess in his garage, spilling oil everywhere, but he did put up with it. And uh, that's what got us into the hobby. Ever since then, uh, anytime I saw a Corvette that was uh, either on the road or sitting parked, I always used to put signs on the cars and, and try to find out if they were for sale. And I found quite a few cars back then, even at the age of 13, 14 years old, to, uh, to find for my older brother to buy. Um, so it was, it, it's always been a hobby of mine. Um, you know, I didn't go right into the business of Corvettes. I was down on Wall Street for quite a long time, sitting behind a desk, and uh, this was always my passion, and, and then really went for it uh, probably about seven, eight years ago. 
Um, so that's, uh, that's about it. I mean, right now, um, I'm working on one of the cars here in the garage, but um, the car is just a great car. And again, it's, it's, it's notoriety uh, is amazing across the world now. Everybody knows what a Corvette is. And the car, I mean, just, just to give you a, a little uh, part of it is that this car from Chevrolet is built in its own factory. They built a factory and started building these cars alone, a separate from the GM factory in Detroit. And they built a factory in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And just Corvettes are built only in that factory since 1982. And it's still going strong today uh, in 2014. Um, they have a museum there, which uh, draws a lot of people. And uh, the Corvette shows across the country, or there's so many numerous shows. Uh, you know, we go to the big one every year is Carlisle. Uh, Corvettes at Carlisle, end of August, and there's just thousands and, and thousands of Corvettes show up every year uh, from all across the country. And uh, there's a lot of cars bought, sold, traded, and, uh, and showed at that weekend. Um, so I hope that gives you a little... Uh, synopsis of what uh, the Corvette hobby is about, and um, I hope we can uh, do something. All right, Maya, thank you. Bye-bye.